Good morning. Lovely to be with you. Wir mit Jess, ich kann auch Jess sehen, ich habe den Dosen mit dir hier. Well, I bring the greetings of the church in Yate. Siel person dated and got Kisha Yate. Brothers and sisters, they send you their love. To Jesus, for less the more you are going, that's all in nature. What I want us to do this morning is uh, turn to Psalm 122. Psalm Psalm Just thought. Jerusalem. Jerusalem is under tour. Kon gjitën fiset, fiset të Zotit, për të kremtuar emrin e Zotit. Sëpse aty janë vën fronet për gjukimin. Fronet e shtëpisi Davidit. Lutën i përpachje në Jerusalemit. Le të begatohen ata që të duan. Pas pache brenda murëve të tua, dhe begati në palate të tua. Për hirë të vlezëve të mi, dhe të miqëve të mi, tani do të sem. Pachja, Chofn te ti. Për hirë të shtëpisë Zotit për andis ton, unë do të kërkoj të mirën të ande. This psalm is what we call a song of ascents. Uh, Ky psalm është një psalm që një quajnë një uh, këng i shtëptimit. It was a psalm that was sung by the people of God when they were traveling to Jerusalem. And so at least three times every year, all of the people were called to go to Jerusalem to worship God. And so those who lived furthest away from Jerusalem perhaps were set out a week before they were due, uh, before the feast was due to take place. And the closer they got to Jerusalem, the more families joined them from the villages as they travelled to the city. And you get an idea of something what it might have been like in, in Luke's Gospel when Uh, Jesus' family are coming away from Jerusalem and there's a big crowd and they lose Jesus. Monta Quitonia in Mongili si pas Lucas si familia Jesus si ton jit Jerusalem e dhe turmi shtache ma dhe sa që i humbën Christi. And as these these are uh, Israelites travelled towards Jerusalem they would sing these psalms. And then there's Israelites who are from Jerusalem it i kandonin kto kang. The psalms, uh, some of the, these psalms, they speak of danger. Some of them speak of where their trust was in that danger. And some of them speak of the anticipation of arriving in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So they're a, they're a lovely group of what we call pilgrim psalms. Now this Psalm 122 is one of those psalms that speaks about the joy of arriving in Jerusalem. So what I want us to do now is to work our way through this psalm. The dodoja që ne të shohim këtë psalm, hap has hapi. And the first, the first way I want us to do that is to, to work our way through the psalm in its original context. What would it have meant for these people travelling to the city? And the gje parë që do të shohim is, qëfar do të thosh të ky psalm për ata uzëtar? And so verse 1 begins with eager excitement because an invitation has been received. Në vargu një ka një emocionim i madhë, sepse një ftes është lëshuar. We have just spoken to us about an, an invitation with the Lord's Supper. Sa po kemi folur për një ftes të darke Zotit. We all like to receive invitations. Që të gjithë ne nga po qenë që të kemi ftesa. And children show their feelings more Uh, more, more overtly when we get invitations. And as the, the day gets closer and closer, children get more and more excited. 
And they pester mum and dad every two minutes. Is it time to go yet? When are we going to be leaving? Well, that's what it was like for the psalmist. That's what it's like for the people as they gathered to get ready to go to Jerusalem. They want, maybe perhaps they were going up for, for Passover and the, the excitement grew as the time got closer. And the word spread round the village. It's time. Let's go to Jerusalem. And here in these words, the psalmist went, Woohoo! We're going. There's a great sense of anticipation and excitement here. And then in verse 2, the psalmist pictures himself actually having arrived in Jerusalem. He imagines what it's going to be like when he actually gets to the gates of the city and he stands there. There's the temple in front of him. Yakush temple He thinks we've made it. What a wonder! What a joy! There's excitement about going to worship God. Can ye emotion to sell chaka du kishkuer patas uruar perendi? Why? Hoxa. What's so great about going to Jerusalem? I could worship God back in my village. But there, there is this unique sense of anticipation. So why is going up to Jerusalem so exciting? Well, the psalmist gives us three responses to that question. Verses 3 to 5, he tells us three truths about Jerusalem in the house of the Lord. Why was it so exciting to go to Jerusalem? Well, firstly, we see in verse 3, it's because it is a place of safety. Jerusalem is built as a city that is bound firmly together. It was a place which symbolized safety and security for Ish, God's people. Particularly after they had a dangerous journey to get there. Let's look at the psalm before, Psalm 121. One of the other psalms they sang when they went to Jerusalem, I lift my eyes to the hills and there's danger everywhere. But now he's arrived in Jerusalem. The danger in the hills is gone. It's a place of safety. And that place of that, 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 that safety comes from the fact that this is where God dwells with his people. This was where God was in the midst of his people. Psalm 48 captures that. For so us. It says, Great is his city, great is the dwelling of God. Great is his holy mountain. And he says, God is in her citadels. He has shown himself to be her fortress. They get to Jerusalem and he's so excited because that's where God lives. And if God is for us, who can be against us? 
This city is a place of safety for God's pilgrim people. What a great cause for joyful expectation. So that's the first reason why Jerusalem is so great. But then secondly, we see that Jerusalem is great because it's a place of God-centered community. You see that in verse 4. This is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. This is where all God's people gathered together to worship together. This wasn't just something for a few special people from within the Jews. It wasn't just limited to one tribe. Or it wasn't just limited to the leaders of the tribe. It wasn't just for the men or just for the grown-ups. All of the people thronged to Jerusalem. God is the God of all of his people without exception. In this community, this belonging was a source of great joy for the psalmist. This is one of the things that made going to Jerusalem so great was that you're going to be there with everyone else worshipping God. And then the third thing about Jerusalem, which made it so wonderful. See in verse 5 that it was the seat of God's righteous sovereignty. There, thrones of judgment, for judgment are placed, thrones of the house of David. This was the place. From where God's anointed reigned. Once again, that's a, a source of security for the people. But it's not just security. It's also provision of, of justice and order and stability. Rend the stabilität. It's structure which which humans thrive on. Es die Struktur, na te zielen chenit nier zore bekatohe. God's rule through His anointed is good. Zot breterini zotid me ante te vai osri te ti asti nier. It's right and it's perfect. Sti dreiti per sosu. God's rule is always to do good for His people. Breterini sum dimi zotid as jismon. God's rule is always to do what is spiritually best for his people. In Jerusalem was the, the earthly manifestation of that rule. And in a few weeks' time I'm taking my daughter to London, to the houses of the UK Parliament. Parliament <laughs> And she's quite excited about going to see where the place where government happens. To go and see where uh, the Prime Minister is and where all of government goes on. Going to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem was even greater because that's where God's government is. The psalmist was excited to be going to Jerusalem. Because it was the, the place of security. Where all of God's people gathered together to worship. And from which God ruled and reigned for his people. 
Then having set that out in verses 6 to 9, Tani buke sankte, no varje jash geri nanant, we have the psalmist and the people's concern for the future. Kemi si te sem shtetsimi ne psalmisti per ta arthme. If you've got something that's so great and so wonderful, no se ke dij kache, kache mir de kache mare, then you're going to be really concerned to make sure that it remains just like that. Ti do do yeshi shetsuerche a yo do te vajdoi kushto. And so we have this exhortation in verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that this will always be this way. And then the psalmist does exactly what he exhorts everyone else to do. He prays. I note it. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Pace brenda mura vete tua de begatina palata to tua. Per hier te vlesve te mi de te mi te vete te mi tani do te sem. Pace chof te ti. Per hier te stupisa zoti parandis ton. Un do te kirkoi te mi rentanda. Three times in verses 6, 7 and 8, we have the word peace. Treher permendet fiala pace, no varje jash dat the tet. Pray that Jerusalem will always be like this. Lutani pace, Jerusalem iti a jif man kushto. Pray that it will always be a place of security, of community and of sovereignty. To yet ni vend pace, komuniteti, the sovereigniteti. The psalmist tells the people, it's in your own interest that you pray that. For the sake of my brothers and friends, he says. He, the psalmist says, our best interest lies in the, the peace of Jerusalem. But it wasn't just a concern for himself and the rest of the people. It was also a concern for the glory of God. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prophet. The psalmist wanted the people to so, make that the focus of their prayer life. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem so that we can keep going up there. Make this the focus of your prayers. What a psalm for God's people. Now that's us looking at the psalm in the context in which it was written. Let's now apply it to ourselves in our context. So the first question we need to address as we do that is how can this possibly be taken as a description of Jerusalem today? When you think of security and God's righteous rule and peace, Jerusalem is probably the last place on earth that comes to mind. Jerusalem is when they found it in a boat, who can patch it, to the just patch it, the new sea, the the brethren who burn this. It's a city of danger and it's a city of ethnic fighting. As you should tell, me me some brazil, the some conflict ethnic. It's a city where there's no king on the throne. You can't bread church to be from Jerusalem. It's the polar opposite of what the psalmist describes. Well, Jerusalem is sought as a hundred extreme to say to the zone at here. But there's another side to the story of Jerusalem. Well, can you answer to the history of Jerusalem? Within the psalms themselves, a, a future day was looked forward to. When the concept of Jerusalem would extend way beyond the physical city. Brenda Psalmave, can you preach Marie to me did Jerusalem in Uddoku for Zohat Nidit? So Psalm 87, verse 2 is amazing in what it claims. Psalm 87, verse 2 The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of you, O city of God. I will record Rahab in Babylon among those who acknowledge me, Philistia too, and Tyre along with Cush, and will say, This one 
was born in Zion. Zoti do porta te sionit meteper se te jitha banesa te Jacobit. Gera te lavdish me thuan per tu o chuteti perendis. Do te permendi Egyptin de Babylonin, ndera tachem en yohim. Ja Filistia de Tiro, se bashku me Etiopin, ku kalindor atje. A day was going to come when people from all over the world would be able to claim a birthright in Jerusalem. The New Testament then picks up on that picture. And it says all of God's people, all of God's saved people come to a different Jerusalem. Paul writes to the churches in Galatia, a group of people who'd never ever been anywhere near Jerusalem in their lives. And he says in chapter 4 that they belong to the Jerusalem above and she is our mother. The writer to the Hebrews in chapter 12 says something very similar. He says, when we come to worship, we come to Jerusalem. The church of the firstborn. The church is the new Jerusalem. The same goes for the imagery of the house of the Lord, the temple that was in Jerusalem. No longer do we need that physical temple. Because Peter and Paul both write that the church is now the house of God. The church is the dwelling place of God. The church of Jesus Christ is the present day fulfillment of this psalm. So we can work our way through the psalm again with the same headings and we can apply them directly to ourselves. So we start once more with eager expectation. When you preach to Do you get excited? The closer Sunday comes. Tomorrow, it's Sunday, and I can go to church. I'm going to worship God. It's exciting. There's anticipation. Sometimes we take it so so much for granted, don't we? And when COVID came, three years ago, and the churches were shut, were they shut here? Yeah. What did it feel like on that first Sunday you were allowed back to church? No more online. And we could come back together. I remember how excited I felt the first Sunday we could go back. Well, that's what it should be like every week for me. Our week should be filled with a rising expectation the closer we get to Sundays and the closer we get to prayer meetings. I rejoiced when my wife said to me, let's go to church. Why? What's so special about being in church this morning? The same three truths that we've already considered apply again. The church is the city that is firmly bound together. The church is the place where we are safe 
from the godlessness and evil of this world. The church is a place of safety because the church is where God dwells. The church is a safe place for our children to be. The church is a safe place for our elderly to be. Those who are most in danger from our society, the young and the old. To gjitha ta që janë më të rezikur e nga shoqëria, të rind dhe të moshuar. The church is where they're valued and where they're safe. Kisha është vendi ku vlerësohen dhe janë të sigurët. Because the church is where God's people are bound together by God. God is in our church. He has shown himself to be our fortress. And secondly, the church is a place of community. The church is the place for all God's people. It's not exclusive just for the privileged few. Race is of no consequence. Gender is of no consequence. Age is of no consequence. Intelligence is of no consequence. Wealth and status are of no consequence. All of God's people come together in the church to praise the name of the Lord. That's truly wonderful. And today is the proof of it. Because if it were not for the church, I would never be here with you. I wouldn't have the joy of being together with you. I, my, my, our paths would never have crossed in life. But the Lord Jesus Christ unites us. He breaks down all the dividing walls that are between us. That you're Albanian and I'm, I'm English. You yeni shqiptar, ky është angles. Paul writes, Christ himself has made peace between us. Sot pali, Krishti ka bërë pachja mi disnesh. He's made the two one, destroying the barrier that divided us. I ka bërë të dy e popuit një, duke shkatruar murin e ndarjes. The church is a place of safety and a place of community. Kisha prasht një vend sigurie, një vend i komunitetit. And thirdly, the church is the place of righteous sovereignty. In the church, the Lord's anointed one is on his throne. The Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal King of David Christ, the one who reigns in heaven with all things being brought together under his feet. He is the head of the church. Jesus rules through his people. Jesus in Bretoron na premiet populitet. We as members of the church submit to his rule. Ed enesian tar te kishes ne in nstrohen i sundimit te ti. In that willing submission to the rule of Christ. Ed ekten nstrim i vol nechem an dein Bretorini te Christit. That brings the security and the structure and the stability that the Old Testament people had in Jerusalem. Da masan nasiel potenieten siguri the structure the stability to njerëzit kishën në zjatën e vjetën në Jerusalem. We submit to and we're guided by Jesus and his word together in the church. Ne i nënstrohemi përëndis, jemi të uzehequr prej krishtit e fjallës e ti. So once again we've seen the eager anticipation of God's people. Pra kemi part të pritshmëri të gëzuar të popullit të zotë. We've seen the reason for that eager anticipation. Edhe kemi parë arsyën pëse. 
It's the place of security, the place of God-centered communal worship. And the place of God's righteous sovereignty. And so then again in verses 6 to 9 we have concern for the future of the church. Again, if we've got something so great as the church, something that's so wonderful, we should be very concerned to ensure that it remains so. And so the exhortation in verse 6 is equally relevant. Pray for the peace of the church. May those who love you be secure. May their peace be within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. We must all pray that the church here in fear will be and will continue to be a place of peace. That's the name of your church. It should be your... Your prayer constantly that this remains a church of peace. That God will protect the security in the community here. And that Jesus Christ would always reign in and through his church. Well, let verses 8 and 9 be your determination this morning. For the sake of each other, I will say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Now you might think that having looked at the psalm in the context in which it was written, and having applied it to our present day, that that would be that. But the psalm is also a psalm for the future. Not only was Jerusalem the physical city of God in Old Testament time, and not only is Jerusalem now the gathered church of God, in the Bible, Jerusalem is also the final destiny of all of God's people. In the Bible, Jerusalem is the destination of all of God's people. That's how uh, the Apostle John had it described to him in Revelation 21. He saw the great vision. I saw the new, uh, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Coming I, I the new Jerusalem is the consummation of the salvation of all of God's people. It's the full number of God's people from across the ages and generations. From every tribe and language and tongue and nation in the world. When they're brought together to that, that final resting place to be face to face with God. And the joy of being together here and now in church on a Sunday. That should make us yearn for the even greater gathering. The gathering when Christ comes again and takes all of his own to be with him. Let's pray.
that joy of heaven. We might be here in the house of our Lord now. But we're also on the way to the house of the Lord. We're a pilgrim people who are marching to Zion. Do you picture yourself standing in heaven's gates? Can you imagine standing there and seeing Jesus? Is this the source of your joy as you press on with eager anticipation? Duron. Everything that we have said about Jerusalem, whether that be Jerusalem of old, whether that be Jerusalem in the church now. It's all just an imperfect picture of the perfection that is to come. The new Jerusalem Jerusalem is the ultimate place of security. The city that is most firmly bound together. There nothing impure will enter in. Rust and moth will not destroy. And no thief will come in to cause damage or harm or loss. The new Jerusalem is the ultimate place of community. Jerusalem is the very perfect per per bashkasi. Where all God's people go up to praise the name of the Lord with praise that will be truly unadulterated. Do bashkohe dis popli perendis che to shkoi that as a roi perendin menye as a rim che nuka as ni loi defect. There be no impure motives in our praise. Nu do ket as ni motiv. To papasterna lavderim atoma. There be no half-heartedness in our praise. No dota lavderoin zot in si majusum zema. There be no distractions going on in our praise. No dona ter hichid vamandi and there's a lavderoin perendi. There be no man-centeredness in our praise. No dota yemi to perchin druar tek nieriu and there's a lavderoin. Revelation chapter 19 pictures it for us. Spolesa nantabas yet perfitorong ta di perne. The gathered people of God singing God's praise. The great multitude whose, whose voices sounded like rushing waters. Sounded like peals of thunder, said John. John is such a zeri popli si bubulime. Praising God, Hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty. And the New Jerusalem is the evident place of righteous sovereignty. Every knee will have bowed before the King of Kings. Before the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And then those who are his, those whose sins have been forgiven. Are taken to be face to face with the King. Now the word throne is mentioned over 30 times in the book of Revelation. And it's the book which is all about Jesus' reign. God and his anointed reign in heaven. It's the ultimate place of justice and structure and order and stability. So we read in Revelation 7 verse 15. God's people are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. He, he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. What a joy. What a prospect. Are you eagerly anticipating this? 
my final point this morning. It's not the same for the future Jerusalem. Because there's no concern for its future. We don't have to pray that the peace of that city will be maintained. Because in the new Jerusalem, all of God's enemies will have been dealt with. Every enemy will have been vanquished. And all of the sin and the failings of God's people of us. All of that will have been completely dealt with. We will at that time be transformed perfectly into the image of Christ. So we won't need to be praying for the peace of this. The only concern that we should have for the future is are you going to be there? Is this glorious future waiting for you? Are you one of God's people now? Are you trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin? Nothing impure is going to enter into that new Jerusalem. So you need to be washed and cleansed in the blood of Jesus this morning. Your concern for the future is that you get there. Come to Jesus Christ this morning. That you might have that joyful anticipation. Amen.